a minute that's gerald it's been a smaller minute that's flex and that's espo what's going on guys Lindsay, can i catch you up on what you missed please because i feel like i was dead for three weeks and i am so out of the loop so the the sons traded mikhail bridges and cam johnson for kevin durant okay he got hurt uh then he played in the playoffs the nuggets Mm. beat him uh then they got Mm. bradley beal for chris paul Mm. and landry shamit saul shed a tear okay uh for landry (laughs) Uh, and then it's been uh, what we call a, a solar coaster ever since. So, mm-hmm. and Bull Bull actually is surprisingly good. So okay, there you go. That's what you got. Oh, well, there's no coma for a year now. What are you saying, <laughs> yeah, bro? Right? That's what it Honestly, feels like. it feels like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and Gerald got married too while you were gone. Yes, <laughs> I know. I'm so bummed that I had to miss your wedding, but congratulations. The pictures were amazing. Thank you. Thank I hear you. the food was bomb, and I'm very upset bomb. that I missed it. D- Dagoon says, who's Bomb. the new chick? <laughs> <laughs> I'm Chelsea. Chelsea. I'm there new here. What's up? <laughs> Congratulations, though, Thank Gerald. You. Thank you. Um, if you guys missed it, he posted a couple pictures on his Twitter account. You should go check it out. They're really pretty pictures. Unbelievable. Right. Unbelievable. Be- one of the best winners I've ever been to. <laughs> Good, I had to right. say it. Love it. Had to say it. Mama G, Papa G, I love y'all. No. Oh. And Grandma G. Oh, I man. saw Grandma dancing. Grandma yeah. G. I'm so bummed I missed that. Oh, she man. came out to Daddy Yankee, which I was not the expecting. The best. Daddy <laughs> Young. Hey. I, yo, I was dancing with my man. I had such a good G. Good. God it. bless y'all. The right. wedding was amazing. And then for some reason, the last three weeks have been pretty great, too. Oh. <laughs> well, that makes for one of us, at least. Yeah. <laughs> I prefer the view from that chair. That's it. Uh, you so. you want to switch? No. I'm not. Actually, no, that's my bad side. I'd switch with Gerald. That's about it, as far as I'm willing to go. All right, guys, let's dive in and uh, talk about some Suns basketball. We had practice today. Gerald, you were out there. First and foremost, let's talk about Isaiah Thomas. Uh, mm-hmm. It was reported that he's going to sign a 10 day contract with the Phoenix Suns. Frank Vogel did tell us that he will officially sign tomorrow. I'm sure the reasoning behind that was just to maximize the amount of days that they have. Yeah. He was in the building, but he did not practice because it's not officially official yet. Um, but he will be available for the 76ers game tomorrow. And here's what Frank Vogel had to say about picking up IT on that 10 day. Yeah, just, uh, you know, get a chance to see where, where he's at, uh, you know, with his, his phase of his career. He's trying to still uh, compete for an opportunity. So, you know, we'll be watching his, uh, you know, if he's able to play in some of the pickup games that we have, our off-day bumps uh, and whatnot, see how he fits around our, our group uh, as a personality. He's, he's a guy that everybody loves. You know what I mean? Like, he's, he's a very well-liked, uh, respected guy in this in this league, in this uh, NBA player fraternity. Um, but we're going to see where his game is at. And, um, you know, again, I don't know how much... Uh, he'll play for us. Uh, he's really here for, for from a depth standpoint because Saban Lee only has four games left. Okay. Mm-hmm. First off, are we buying he didn't practice with the team today? No. No okay, comment. I'm not, I, I, no I, comment. I, I, I am not buying that one bit. <laughs> no, but of course for, not. For NBA rules and regulations, we'll agree he did not practice <laughs> yeah. uh, with the team today. Uh, this is this is interesting to me. We talked about it a little bit on Sunday, but. To anybody saying, oh, they've solved the true point guard issue. They got the point guard they've been... No. IT has never been a point guard, nor will he ever be a true point guard. He is a score first guard. So do not hold your breath on that. That's that's the thing I want to uh, preach some caution on to anybody feeling that way. Yeah. yeah listen, we talked about it the other day. Um, I, I I like the idea. I do. You're right. He's never been a true point guard. Um, when the news came out, I I took some some time to really dive deep into Isaiah Thomas today, mm-hmm. and um, 
he still shoots the hell out the basketball. Mm-hmm. That's for sure. Mm-hmm. You know, he takes he took a lot in the G League. Well, fourteen. Oh, we, yeah. He he had uh, fourteen attempts per game, made six point three of them. Yeah. So I mean, he shot as many as some sons half. So right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. So that's that's good though. Yes. That's a good thing. He he can still shoot the ball. Uh, he's shifty, sneaky shifty. And he's a vet that's done, that's played a lot of basketball. So how that fits into us, we don't know yet. We have no idea. He can absolutely not play at all. But I, I do see a window where IT can come in and provide some stuff that this team is lacking, particularly three-point shooting. Mm. And the confidence to operate in pick and roll when Book and KD are out for, for in spurts, um, the confidence that he has as a scorer. And he's sneaky good in the pick and roll. Like, he's sneaky good in the pick and roll with bigs. Um, he, he can still get into the paint. Now, at an NBA level, we'll have to see. But what I saw on tape in the G League, he can still find his way into the paint, and he's got a nice little mid-range jumper. So there's still things about IT that, in a perfect world, you might catch lightning in a bottle. So it's not a bad swing. I think I mentioned this on Sunday, but I talked to uh, one of the people that coached him during his G League stint, and the thing that stood out to me is he said, this is a guy that understands his place right now in the game at 35. Uh, it's it's not some delusions of grandeur that it, that he has coming in here. So well, that's good news because uh, it it is a flyer. Like, yeah, appearance. it's a 10 day contract for a reason. And yes, there's still the 15th roster spot available. They could use another guard on the roster, but like you said, he's not a traditional true point guard that everyone has been clamoring for all season yeah. he's a score first guard he always has been mm-hmm. um but he can help with the three-point shooting if he gets minutes like vogel said he said he said it point blank like i don't know how much he's going to play because we signed him for depth because Saban lee on that two-way contract he only has four games of mm-hmm. eligibility left before they have to convert him so mm-hmm. i i'm not gonna have very high expectations but it is a cool story for him to be back in the league even if it winds up only being 10 to 20 days right it is it's neat and bradley beals shared a little bit of his perspective around that as well uh talking about uh it battling his way back and what he thinks he can contribute to the suns speaks volumes man because I'm, I'm a huge it fan from competing against him for so many years when he was in boston and uh you know being his teammate in dc as well like i've, I've got a chance to see him every single day put the work in and and, uh, you know, the challenges that he went through as a player, uh, you know, overcoming some injuries too. But, you know, to be able to come back now, like you said, it's very unheard of. Um, but I commend him, man. I salute him. He's always been a worker. Uh, he believes in the process. He trusts his work. And, you know, that's just the evolution of today's game and just the evolution of who he is. You know, he's, he's always going to be a hooper. You know, there's nothing that can stop him or set him back. Um, from accomplishing his goals and dreams, and, and he's one that lives it out, man. So he's a great prime example, I feel like, to kids and to a lot of people, you know, of just going out and, and just keep pushing. You know, no matter if people tell you no, no matter if people shut you down, uh, he's heard it all, you know, and to see him back is, I love it, and I'm excited for him. With the experience you've had with him as a teammate, what can he provide to the locker room for you guys right now? Uh, one, we all know he's a good offensive player for sure, but I think just his leadership, his ability to be able to uh, lead, lead a locker room, um, encourage guys, you know, give his, his, his IQ of the game, um, which is which is super high. I think he'll definitely help me out a lot with running the point and just giving me some uh, different viewpoints and ways that I can attack, uh, can attack that I may have not have seen before, you know, so, um, and then just when we plug him in, like he's he's going to be dynamic for us. He's going to be a scorer. He's going to be able to help us. So you know, we need that that shooting, his shooting ability, because uh, we need more threes. Need yeah. more threes. There we go. <laughs> yeah. Here we go. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna give you a, a, a take. Real, real talk. It is going to get an opportunity. Mm. I, I really do. I do, I really believe he's going to get an opportunity, and I believe he's going to make. I I think he has a good chance to make good on that opportunity because of the construction of this roster and what we need and what we're looking for. Um, I, I think, I think this guy's going to actually play a little more than people think. And I actually think he'll be the 15 guy. Okay. I, I think they, they'll keep him for the whole, for the rest of the season and the playoff run. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm excited to see it because it's, you don't need a lot guys. You mm-hmm. don't need a lot. If that guy can come in for six, seven minutes and apply pressure and shoot the three ball, make a couple shots, it makes a world of difference for this basketball team. So 
I'm intrigued, man. I really am. I wasn't as much this weekend, but didn't, doing a deep dive and having some conversations, watching the tape, I'm intrigued. I mean, there's a couple of people in the chat who are all saying, listen, I'll take IT over Saban Lee in those handful of minutes that are available for that last roster spot. Are you guys on the same boat or would yeah. you rather have Saban? No, I, I, or do you need to see what maybe IT brings? Yeah, I have no idea what to because the numbers he's putting up in the G League are insane. But they're, it's the G great, League. But it's the G League for right. a reason. And he's a guy who has a lot of NBA experience. So you plug a guy like that into the G League, of course he's going to know how to play well right. in And that one of the things he's talked about in that environment was passing along knowledge and helping right. young guys out. Right. You're battling young guys. Right. Most and, of the time. and it's totally different situation what he's coming here into Phoenix to do versus his last couple stops with Charlotte yeah. and Dallas. Those teams <clears throat> were not, they didn't have they weren't the good. expectations that this Suns team has. So, and, and I don't know if it was the same opportunity either because he has an opportunity to contribute on a team that wants to make a deep playoff run. So I don't, I truthfully don't know what to expect. I think what you're hoping for out of IT is the shooting, like we've mentioned, because mm -hmm. this team has to get up more threes <clears throat> and someone who can be a paint touch. That is what Saban Lee does. He is not a good finisher around the rim. He's made like two threes all season long. So he definitely has his flaws. But the one thing he does well that he brings to the table is he's a pest defensively and he gets to the paint, mm -hmm. which the Suns don't do enough. I don't know that I, Isaiah Thomas is a guy you have to hide on defense. And if he's not getting into the lane, then he's just another guy that's getting up shots and taking them from away from the guys that probably should be getting them. We got to admit though, the stats, and I think we have a graphic for this in the G league. were pretty nuts. They were with the Utah team, 32 and a half points a game, 5.3 assists, 3.3 rebounds, 1.3 steals shot 44% from behind the arc. Like I, <laughs> I, I get, I get, don't, you wouldn't expect that, but what it does tell me is the hip problems, all those things, mm -hmm. Uh, are probably better, yeah. subsided where could he <clears throat> give you some surprising minutes? Yeah. Uh, and we're talking about the 15th roster spot in reality. Right. So whether it's him, whether it's Saban, if you're seeing them play major minutes, something's horribly <laughs> gone wrong anyways. Yeah. Uh, I just, uh, part of me likes the idea that we, it is more of a known quantity where, you know, he's going to shoot, uh, you know, he's, he's likely going to, hit at a pretty decent clip. Saban, you, you don't really know. You haven't, I mm. mean, he's never stepped court, uh, foot on the court in a playoff game yeah. where we know IT has. That That would be the, depending on how he looks, sure. that would be my deciding factor. But what what caught my interest in what Bradley Beal said was he brings Save. up a leadership mm. with mm -hmm. Isaiah Thomas, mm. which it's weird to me to think that they're still at that point where they're like, well, we, we're bringing in a guy with, with the leadership kind of thing. And I don't want to read too much into it, but mm -hmm. again, you're, you're 13, what, you're, also, you're at the tail end of the season. I get what you're saying, but I also kind of think that's one of those cliches. Anytime <laughs> yeah, a player is over guy. the age of 27, <laughs> yeah. now it's like, oh, leadership qualities, good locker room. Uh -huh. It's just one of those cliches. So we, I yeah. really wouldn't read too much into I, the leadership. We got comments. half our leadership qualities back today on the program. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, going, oh. Look at that. <laughs> I, I, will, I will say this. I will say this. Uh, in the clip with Brad Beal, he says something caught my attention he said he can definitely help help me out behind me mm -hmm. right insinuating that in minutes when brad is off the court he can probably run the point for a couple minutes that's number one number two e can you put them stats back up all right so that's g league stats understand the nba is not the g league so mm -hmm. that's gonna look inflated but here's what i will say here's what i will say the size of the court in the g league is the same size the mm -hmm. basketball is the same size, and the three-point line is the same size. This isn't a knock on Saban. I'm not taking a shot at Saban. But if you took today's Saban Lee and put him in the G League, he ain't putting up those numbers in mm -hmm. the G League. I would probably agree. We don't okay. know because we don't have no, a G League no. team. But, <laughs> but, but we'll find out next year. Do you get my point, G? Yeah. Like, real talk. Like, so you have to – sometimes you got to keep it simple. Like – Saban Lee, if we're if he was dumped into the G League for that amount of games, I don't know that he's putting up those numbers. Mm. And so you you can't just ignore it. You just can't just drive over it and be like, ah, it's just the G League because there's guys in the NBA that can't go to the G League and do that. Yeah, no, for sure. Yeah, I, my my thing is like, at what point 
do yeah. we look at the scoring and be like, okay, we've got enough of that. We need, yeah, need defense. We need yeah. defense or we need paint touches. We need penetration. We need drive and kick. We need ball movement. Like we don't have those things. But Isaiah Thomas can be choos- can't be choosing. No, of course. <laughs> but like, I, I just, I don't want to read too much into Isaiah Thomas, even if he is still that level of scorer, because like that was never their problem. Yeah. The problem true. was like, we need to move the ball. We need to not get stagnant on offense and defensively, we need to guard the damn three point line. Yeah, <laughs> I like play with some urgency. But I think Brad, in the last thing he said, brought it up, which I, really what it is is a guy not afraid to take more of those three point attempts. And yeah. and we've talked about it. They lack in that. Like thirty mm-hmm. ain't gonna get it done in most cases. And I know no. people say, well, they still score at at a high clip even without. Sure. But if they're going to not guard the three-point line, mm-hmm. they're going to have to hit more yeah. to, to be in these games. So I, I think that's probably the thinking because there wasn't a defensive stopper out there available or a right. two-point guard that would have made sense. So I, I think that's why we're sitting with Isaiah Thomas. <laughs> Woo! I got a number for G. Sure. You're the analytics school rule. You're the guy with the numbers. Mm. The number I'm looking at now and I don't even know if there's a number out there, but I'm telling you, the mm. number I'm looking at now is differential mm. of attempts. Yeah, for threes. Three point differential, a, attempt differential. Mm-hmm. You can't give up 50 and take 30. There's a 20 shot differential there. Mm-hmm. There is no way on God's green earth you're going to survive in the playoffs or even win a championship mm-hmm. if that differential is that damn wide. You got to oh, yeah. find a way to shrink that. So how do you shrink that? You contest at the three-point line. You stay at home. You deny threes. That's number one. You got to do a better job of that. And you have to take more. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, Isaiah helps you take more. But how do we shorten the gap in, in, in regards to how many they're taking? That's the well, big thing. That, that is the big thing. And that's why when people are saying, well, if we don't need more scoring, why are we getting outscored? Because you're giving up 140 <laughs> fucking points okay. a game. You there can't you do go. that. You mean 18 three-pointers and a half ain't God good? Bless. But listen, listen, listen. We might get both, okay? IT signing a 10-day. <laughs> Uh, Coach Bogle told us today the emphasis of practice was three-point defense, quote, by a mile. There we go. So here's what he had to say about the Suns' (laughs) three-point defense against Boston and Milwaukee. Yeah, awareness. A lot of overhelping, a lot of short closeouts. Um, You know, the spread five coverages, uh, you know, gave us problems. Um, We didn't execute them well enough. We have protections built in, you know, to keep our centers on the floor, but... Uh, we didn't execute them very well, um, but with, with anything, when you have a, a you know a, sh- a three-point barrage like we saw in those two games, they're all shapes and sizes, you know. But uh, the general urgency, I thought we played uh, really hard, especially when we got down and you know battled to fight back in the game. But you know the one area that we we didn't play hard enough was the urgency to the three-point line. See, so we're going to get both tomorrow. <laughs> we're going to put up more threes and we're going to be better defensively. I love how it's like, oh, I love we, it. Lynch. We decided to start practicing that today. I know that's how better late know. than never. It's, that's that's <laughs> better late than never. Uh, I'm just saying. But so, see, we're, we're still but close we're, to never. <laughs> that's the thing is like, I was getting a bunch of comments about like, why don't the Suns focus on guarding the three point line? Guys. Every defense tries to do that in the NBA, but yeah. it's really hard with the skill level to do that, especially when their focus has been protecting the paint because they were getting <laughs> torched early in the season with points in the paint. I think they overcorrected, and I think you go. because they don't have the defenders to contain on the perimeter, as soon as that first drive-by happens, you're helping, you're rotating, you're in scramble mode, and that always opens up the three-point line. And so against teams like the Bucks and the Celtics that are top five in both three-point attempts and three-point percentage, you're going to get torched if you don't play well and contain that initial drive. And they didn't in either game, and they got absolutely wrecked for it. I don't think it's a focus point like we haven't been focused on guarding the three-point line. Now we're going to start doing that. Like, Jesus Christ, what do we think that they're doing in practice? I mean, that would be hilarious (laughs) if that was the case, though. Oh, we've just only been guarding twos. What what is this? Can I I throw some? And, and Lindsay, you're going to like this one, okay? Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm being serious. This is just me looking at tape. And, G, I think you'll appreciate it, too. Not you. No, I'm messing around. <laughs> I'm messing around. I'm messing around. Espo, too. Espo, too. No, Play I'm joking. Your ass back to New Jersey. I'm joking. Right? I'm joking. Listen. 
<laughs> Look at the games versus Boston. Two games versus Boston. The differential from the three line was 120 to 60. Mm. Points wise. Points wise. Right? 43s to 20. And then against Milwaukee, you saw what happened. Mm-hmm. I'm telling y'all right now, stop shitting on Josh Akogi. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm I'm serious. This is this is that line. This is that line in the in the sand. You want offense from a Kogi, but sometimes you're able to get things from a Kogi that go beyond the offensive level. Mm-hmm. A Kogi helps with the point of defense defense yep. and, and helps with that guy attacking the paint and having to have a guy rotate. Mm-hmm. So if a Kogi misses five threes, but he prevents five threes, I'm taking it. Mm-hmm. And that's and that's where we're at with it. And a Kogi didn't play in any of those games. And I'll be the first one to tell you, I can't wait for Josh Akogi to come back. Well, yeah. I, I take everything back I said about Josh. Bring his <laughs> ass back because we need him on defense. I, did, yeah. <laughs> I just I want to see cleaner rotations because you go back and look at in particular the Milwaukee game but yeah. also those Celtics games they they go to help but it also seems like two guys don't exactly know where they're supposed to be at any given time and it looks more like confusion mm. and then it leads to either no contest or lazy contests in some cases and and to me that feels like being lo- more locked in on the defensive yeah. end right not mm. that they're not pl- uh, preparing defensively to guard the 3 not that they're that they're not practicing that or that their only focus is on is the paint it's just it seems like it's it, it's sloppy, it's clunky, mm-hmm. and I get these guys are not the best defenders ever, right? Mm-hmm. And we can accept that, but what I can't accept is it should be easier to have cleaner rotations on defense, to, to have a little bit more effort at times, and that's what I want to see out of this group than what we saw. The, the effort was concerning, especially in the Milwaukee game, and, and yeah. Frank mentioned the short closeouts, which is basically code for we gave up on the play and didn't get out to shooters. We didn't have the sense of urgency to get out to shooters, and that's just unacceptable at this point in the season. Yeah. Like There needs to be that sense of urgency in all aspects, not just the three-point defense, um, but the biggest thing for me is that, like, they are doing different coverages throughout the game. It's not one set coverage throughout a game. It's not drop coverage all game. It's not zone all game. We've seen them go to zone. Like they mm-hmm. are mixing different things in based on the personnel they have and who they're going against. Um, but a lot of those rotations, he, Frank Vogel mentioned in practice today, like never stop rotating. We cannot stop our rotations because if you are blown by or you close out on a shooter and dro- drive them off the three point line, guess what? You got to get back into the play and re- recover to whatever guy is open out there because there's going to be rotations there's going to be help but they can't over help because that's when they get burned on all these threes um so all around that sense of urgency was something that is standing out yeah and bradley beale spoke about these last two games and that sense of urgency today here's what he had to say it's definitely frustrating uh you know it's over now we we move on to to the next game uh but for sure you know we we definitely can't lay eggs like that. You know, we, we got to come out with a lot of better focus and a lot more sense of urgency than what we've been having. Uh, that's been way, way unacceptable, and we all know that. So, you know, we got to be better these last 14, really lock in. And it starts with uh, with us three and our attention to detail and our focus. And when we're good and we're focused and locked in, the rest of the team can follow. So the whole team needs to lock in a little bit more. And Frank Vogel also echoed that same sentiment as well. Yeah, we're in the playoffs before the playoffs. Right? Uh, all of us want to get into the top six. Uh, we are confident that if we are in a play-in game, we will win. Uh, but there's too many variables, you know, with a one-game situation like that. You know, somebody could get the flu, somebody could roll an ankle. You know, I mean, there's just uh, you've seen it in, in some of these play-in games where key guys are out, and um, you know, we want to stay away from those uh, those types of situations, and um, you know, hopefully go on a run starting the month. I mean, listen, guys, you got 14 games left in the season. It's now or never. Let's go. Right. And, and Brad said it best. Like, we can't lay eggs, and it starts with us three at the top. And that's one thing that stood out from that Bucks game was I, I hate – I don't want to use the term body language and play body language doctor. But, like, how do you go into that game in Milwaukee with, you know, less than 20 games left in the season? You're currently in or near a play-in spot, 
and you get shellacked for 82 yeah. first half points and 18 threes in a first half, 18 threes in a game, you're going to struggle to win that game. In a first half with Bobby Portis dropping 25 on you with Giannis that. not playing, that's <clears throat> embarrassing. Like that can never happen. And that's on all three. That's on everybody, yeah. but especially the three at the top. And they know that. Yeah, Gerald, I did go to the U of A and got my doctorate <laughs> in body language. I'll put on the white lab <laughs> coat. And I'm just going to tell you, not great, Bob. It almost looked like it was flatlining at one point mm -hmm. in that first half. And that's that's the kind of things you can't have happen. Effort, energy, hustle, those are the things you can control on any given night. You can't always control whether you make or miss, but you can control the effort. And that's what you have to see at 100% the next 14 games, especially the next four. Mm -hmm. If you don't play well and win at least three of the next four, you might as well get ready for a play. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, first of all, I'm going to say Lindsay, Lindsay returned today. And that's a secret weapon. <laughs> no, nah, I'm serious. We're winning the next four, and we're gonna and we're gonna correlate it to Lindsay. Don't blame retirement. it on me if it doesn't happen. Flex. Yeah, don't blame it. Me. Don't blame it on it. This is all on me. But I'm telling y'all, Lindsay came back. We're winning the next four, <laughs> and so the. But but I will say this, and, and and most people that play basketball have experienced this. You roll up to a gym on a Sunday, you chilled on Saturday. You know you're better than the guys you're playing. Mm -hmm. And then you get in the gym, and this is what you do. Instead of getting on that guy at the line or that guy taking a shot, here's what you do. You let him take the first one. And when he makes it, you know what you say? Ah, right, let's see if he can make a second one. Mm -hmm. And then he makes a second one, and you're like, ah, there's no way you're making three in a row. Mm -hmm. And then he makes a third one. Oh, and then, and then, and then you got the audacity to be like, Man, there's no fucking way you're hitting four. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then he hits four, and now you're in trouble because now you can't put that fire out. Mm -hmm. I don't care. And that happens in gyms all over the world. That happens at the YMCA on Sunday. That's what the Suns did with Bobby Portis. They and, fucked around. And Al Horford. And, and Al Horford. <laughs> mm -hmm. they, they, with both players, they messed around and said, I don't believe you can do that. And then they got them going, and Bobby Portis became Bobby Jordan. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was a wrap. So that's the type of shit you can control. You can control that from jump ball. I'm not giving you that first one. Mm -hmm. But once he got damn going, man, it's like, wow, man, that guy, that guy looked like prime Michael Jordan out there right. in Milwaukee. So, yeah, they play with their food. They got smacked the hell up. And now it's go time. It's playoff time. Next 14 are all playoff games. Yeah. And, and we need to see it now because we've heard, like, Brad and Frank, they said all the right things in practice today. But when someone tells you who they are many times throughout a season, at some point you have to believe them. We mm -hmm. have seen that this team can be a title contending caliber team when everything is locked in, when they are playing at their peak. But that peak has not been sustained. It hasn't been consistent. And too many times we've seen these inexplicable losses where they just look like we know we're good. We know we can come back and get back in a game because we've done it against the Kings. We've done it against the Bulls. And you can't do that against teams like the Celtics yeah. or the Bucks. No. You are going to get swept <clears throat> against teams like that in the playoffs. So that's what I'm looking for for these last 14 games is can you get back to that peak level and can you actually sustain it for more than a handful of games at a time? Because if not, I've, I said this last week or the week before, I don't think this is the Suns' year. They could still go on a deep playoff run. But based on everything we've seen, we don't have a lot of reason to believe they'll be able to reach that level and sustain it. And so that's what I'm looking for for these last couple of weeks. Can you get there and can you prove everyone wrong that like, no, the glimpses that we've shown, that's who we really can be? We shall see. But <laughs> hey, guys, listen, there was one really positive thing that came out of practice today. Uh, this one's from Frank Vogel. Congrats, man. Thank you. I'm very excited to not. Huh? Thank you. I appreciate it. Way to go. Thank you. That's a luck learner. You got any advice for him? Advice? Uh, do whatever he tells you. That's fine. Happy wife, happy life. Just in case y'all had a hard time hearing, the advice was. Do whatever she tells you to do. Happy yep. wife, happy life. <laughs> and I co-sign that, bro. Congratulations, Gerald. Thank you. Gerald, just treat it like work. Happy host, happy life. There we go. <laughs> just do what she says. Okay? There we go. No, that was that was really nice of him because that was at the very beginning. Yeah. He just congratulated me. So he was, came out nice. and he was like, first things first, hold yeah. on. I have an announcement, everybody. <laughs> yeah, no, that was nice. Congratulations to Gerald. That's awesome. That man. was really sweet. Well deserved. Yeah, I appreciate that he pays attention to all of you guys who are there day in and day out. 
Um, so that was super nice to see. And one more time, congratulations, Gerald. Okay, Thank that's you. it. I'm not saying it anymore. Okay. <laughs> but if you guys want to say it to Gerald in real life, in person, face to face, you can do it this Saturday at our tea party. Let's go. It's going to be a blast. It's out at Dobson Ranch golf course um it's gonna be at 4 p.m we're gonna watch the suns take on the spurs we're gonna play some golf we're gonna have some fun there's gonna be drinks uh merch contests and prizes going on out there and it's presented by our friends over at four peaks brewing as well you can get your tickets it's you can do a foursome or you can do a solo ticket over at gophnx.com just click the events tab and all the information is there for you come hang out with us yes Flex, have, have I told you about my new favorite thing to do? No, what is it? Well, other than eating the food at Gerald's <laughs> wedding, there is <laughs> one other thing. It's prize picks. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. It, it's my favorite uh, daily fantasy sports uh, platform, and it's super easy to use, right? You pick more or less on six to two to six players. You pick their stats. It's super easy. And I actually have the app open right here. And right now, you can pick Caitlin Clark to have more or less than 0.5 points in Saturday's uh, tournament matchup. It's a 98% off special. Damn. And if you don't take the more, you're an idiot. All right? Because <laughs> obviously- said 0. 0.5? 0. 0.5. She's gonna They're score at least one They're basically just trying to give you money. They're giving yeah. you that. And then, uh, you know, there's all sorts of stuff that you can do tonight for the NBA. I'm gonna be doing that uh, after we get off the show because I have fallen in love with this uh, with this app and the best part is is it's literally so simple it really it is. takes you like 30 seconds to fill it out and then you're done it's like it, i love that it's idiot proof and that's why i love it so <laughs> much uh you know and you can make your picks and submit them basically in less than 60 seconds which is just insane uh and you can now win up to 100 times your money on prize pick with as little as four correct picks which I've done this, mm -hmm. not a hundred times, but I, I, I won significantly uh, with it. You can turn $10 into a thousand with NBA, NHL, and college basketball entries today on Prize Picks, and it's America's number one fantasy sports app for a reason, and it's ESPO approved, which is the <laughs> seal of approval that you need to get in on something like this. So go to prizepicks.com slash PHNX and use the code PHNX for a first deposit match up to $100, and yes, it works. I've done it. That's prizepicks.com slash PHNX. Use the code PHNX. Pick more, pick less. It's just that easy. And Lindsay, you know what? I'm going to give you more time off. And Gerald, this is one you should listen to closely because oh. just because you're married doesn't mean you can let yourself go. All right. Okay. Not allowed. <laughs> and that's why this episode is brought to you by the spring cleaning champions, oh, no. Manscaped. <laughs> This season, make sure you're gro to groom your carpets and your drapes with the leaders in below-the-belt grooming. Clear out the winter bush with Manscaped Lawnmower 5.0 and watch your confidence bloom like springtime flowers. Embrace the season and join 10 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with our special offer. Go to manscaped.com and use the promo code PHNX for 20% off and free shipping. After Same using flowers. Manscaped, I can finally say I caught spring fever. All right. <laughs> That's what as it's telling As long as it's not oh, valley no. fever, we're good. Uh, okay. <laughs> yep. I, I did get I did get tested for that and it was positive. Oh no. Positive that it was nice no, no, and spring smooth. Fever, okay. Not okay. the valley fever. No, no. Okay. <laughs> Their fifth generation trimmer features two interchangeable next gen skin safe blade heads. You ain't you ain't causing anything bleeding here, Gareth. All right. You'll be smooth and oh, safe. No. Uh, it's a standard uh, one for taking a little off the top in case you just need a trim uh, and a new foil blade to go smooth whenever your heart desires or hers for that matter it also features dual led spotlights to guide you through the darkest winter debris navigating with confidence in your delicate areas especially gerald if you decide to go camping and want to shave in a in a uh, freaking cave how long is this lights? fucking app <laughs> <laughs> so, so get 20% off and free shipping with the code PHNX20 at manscaped.com. That's 20% off, which you can actually shave that oh much God. off if you want, and free shipping with the code oh, PHNX20 man. at manscaped.com. <laughs> Nothing like a little spring cleaning in your pants. I'm sorry, Mr. and Mrs. Girth, once again. Oh, my God. <laughs> Yo, can I, can I, can I, real quick. So rest in peace to the GOAT, Dave King. Mm -hmm. But... <laughs> I did a show with Dave King on uh, Brightside, and he was doing this Manscaped thing. Mm -hmm. And, bro, he asked me 
right before he he said, Flex, I have a question for you. I said, what's up, Dave? He goes, do you trim down there? Oh, no. no. And I'm like, uh, yeah, bro. And he's like, well, that leads me right in the middle. Man, it was the funniest fucking thing ever. I was completely thrown off. With Dave's monotone. And then, and then everybody kept tweeting me like, yo, That's that was the, the funniest best thing best ever. ever. Yeah, though. so thank you oh for not God. doing what the great Dave King oh, did do. Now you're That's hilarious. Don't even ask me that. Don't that you is worry. hilarious. Yeah, so, so. My goodness. All right. We've gotten a lot of people in the chat asking us about the title of this podcast, which is, Are the Phoenix Suns Strategically Not Living Up to Their Potential on Purpose? Espo, you posed the question, are the Suns playing possum? What do you think? I hope so. (laughs) (laughs) Because... Oh no! I mean, <laughs> we That's, haven't seen what we want to see. Have we reached the level of like coping that we have? To We're start down doing bad. <laughs> oh, I, we are down bad. I missed bad. Week, so I'm not totally do, sure where we're at vibes uh, wise. Do you want to feel great? Do you want to know how down bad we are? Do you mm. have that graphic, Eric? No, I'm worried. I mean, if they're playing possum, we've gotten into the highly desperate range here okay. because these are teams who won championships. These are the only teams. To have won championships with a with a worse or the same record as the Phoenix Suns, and this ain't looking good because the last time somebody did it, mm. there was no cable television. Yeah, Dang. right. Nineteen seventy seven seventy eight, the Bullets were thirty six and thirty two. They won the championship. They finished the season forty four and thirty eight. The nineteen seventy six seventy seven Portland Trail Blazers had the exact same record as the Suns, thirty nine and twenty nine. At this point, they finished forty nine and thirty three and won the title. And the seventy four seventy five Golden State Warriors were a game worse at thirty eight and thirty, and uh, won. 48 and 34, they finished that season and won the title, right? So Mm. right now through 68 games, things ain't looking good. And I even went to the ABA titles just to go, okay, maybe. Nope. Only two ABA teams won Mm -hmm. uh, with worse, same or worse records at this point in the season. So there's not a lot of track records that, that show you that a team that's sitting where they are can turn it on, flip the switch, and win. Mm. The closest that we've seen in the modern era, 1995. Were you even born yet, Gerald? I was born. Okay. <laughs> Lindsay wasn't, all right? Well, you know that much. But, I mean, think about that. That's AOL is the primary internet. Mm. Uh, cell phones are just becoming popular, and you know what all they could do? Make a phone call. There was no even texting Were phones at the around times. in 95? Yes. I thought well, it was beepers That was beepers right still. the start. It, beepers I, that were was still beepers. Popular. That popular. was beepers. I was rocking beepers in 95. You're talking about the Houston Rockets, Houston Rockets correct? Rockets, who were a, and, 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 and weren't they down 3-1 to the Suns? Yes, but they, yeah. they had a better record than the Suns at this point by a game or two uh, as well. So they, they even had a better record. At this point, and mm-hmm. it was close, but that's the closest we've come to. So there's not a lot of precedent that this team can magically turn the switch. Mm-hmm. Well, no, well, but I like so says Jay's thoughts I in do the chat. Too. Read that, please. So dot dot dot. You're saying it's about time for it to happen again. I, there I we go. What a, you're telling me is there's so a chance. You're telling me there's a chance. The yes. old Dumb and Dumber line. Uh, exactly. Yeah. We're, Which no, one are we? We're, we're not fucking playing possum, guys. This is this is. I mean, I know that you know this already. This is this is cope. This is what we yeah. do when a team that had expectations much higher than where they currently are is disappointing. And I think again, I've gone back to the injuries being the root of all of that, but. There, it can be both things. It can be that this team has disappointed when they've had two of the big three out there, or even when they've had one of the big three out there sometimes. But we knew this was a top heavy team. They still haven't played 30 games together as a big three. That was going to cost you. I came into the season saying, I need like 60 games of the big three, 50 to 60 minimum to feel good about their chances of competing with teams like the Nuggets or the Clippers in the West. They didn't get there. They, they're barely going to get halfway there. And that's just not enough time for a group like this to come together and actually be a title contender. So I don't think this is their year for that reason. But are they like lying in wait, pretend just kind of not showing people their true cards? No, they're they are they are who they are. I feel like they're a team that is fully capable of kicking anyone's ass on a given night because they have the talent that they have and they have good role players around them, too. 
but they're also capable of the team that just comes out and no shows an entire half and then plays catch up because they know how good they are. And I think that's the bigger issue to me. I think that they have so much talent and firepower on their roster that they know that they can get back into any game at any point in time. And so they don't come out with the necessary urgency. I think that's the problem. But what if they were just trying to make Milwaukee and Boston have a false sense of confidence? <laughs> so when they meet them in the finals, <laughs> yes, they yeah. smack them in the mouth. They got to get exactly. they got to get a playoff oh, spot not, first. That's, that's, that's a problem. That's not right. just get out of the West, not just win a playoff series. They got to get to the playoffs first. That's right why now. we that's don't let Bull Bull play in the second half of games. <laughs> See, that's just why. waiting. That's why. That, that's why KD is downshifted uh, for a little mm-hmm. while because he's saving the energy. I mean, I mean, let's do this. Yeah. yeah listen, I, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't use the word plain possum. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I, I do think that this there's some things that this team could potentially do later on in the playoffs that we may not have seen. I've seen this presidents for that. I, I've seen teams mm-hmm. do that. Nick Nurse was good at doing that, you know, in Toronto, mm-hmm. throwing out some defenses that you've never seen in the regular season. I think Are that they- was the most interesting point you brought up to me in the office was Nick Nurse coming out with a completely different defensive strategy in the playoffs that changed yeah. some of their and, fortune. And, and, and there's this, there's, Teams that have done that. There's teams that have done that. Now I don't I'm not gonna sit here and tell you this is what the Suns are doing. I'm saying that there are examples that mm-hmm. we can go to where coaches have completely thrown things, uh, you know, switched things up in the playoffs that threw a little bit of a curveball. Nick Nurse, particularly with the boxing one against Giannis and mm-hmm. certain things that you just don't see in a regular season. So there I, I do believe that there may be something that Frank might have that He's saying, you know what, this is something I can throw into the playoffs. Is that possible? Yes. But are they losing games or playing possum or no, I don't I don't believe in that. But uh, to your point about the the four teams, the stats, mm-hmm. the history, using history. What's the word you are uh, using uh, as history barometer. as a barometer? Mm-hmm. I don't buy into that stuff. Mm-hmm. I don't buy into it because there's been too many times where history has been on the sun side. And it still doesn't work out. Mm-hmm. And so if you're going to believe one side, you have to look at the other side. When the Suns were up 2-0 against the Bucks, the, the winning rate for teams up 2-0 in the finals is 90%. So there's 10% of the teams are able to come back from 2-0 down in the finals. Mm-hmm. Guess what? The Bucks did it to the Suns. Mm-hmm. And so there's been too much of that. Even the 64-18 and 18 team, the differential between how they won <laughs> And all that other stuff. There was a whole bunch of historical numbers that said the Phoenix Suns are going to win a championship this year, mm-hmm. and it didn't work out. So I don't, I don't buy into history as a barometer. I think at the end of the day, man, the best team in basketball wins. In a seven game series, the best team wins. And and if the Suns are the best team, they'll find a way to get through a seven game series. If they're not, then then they won't. That's that. I understand the perspective, but I also. I have to look at the history because that's what tells us what has happened in this game and and what has, at least up to this point, been realistically possible. Mm -hmm. So those stats lead you to believe that it's not, but I'm not likely that they win. But to me, I also am a superstitious guy, a guy that (laughs) believes in the basketball gods, and I go, to your point, the Phoenix Suns have had those in their favor and choked it away. Mm-hmm. So if they were ever going to win a title, wouldn't it happen in the in the weirdest way possible, mm-hmm. where yeah. it felt like it wasn't it, it was not in the cards at all, and then they did something that we've rarely or never seen in NBA history, and then they win it. We all go. Well, that's never the way we expected We're that like, to go. Of course, go, this right? is yeah. the way that this happened. I would be so curious what the fan reaction would be to that because all season long, the vibes around here have been so overwhelmingly negative. Like, how yeah. would people? I would they just forget about the regular yes. season? Be yes. like, we're we're gonna pretend like that yes. part didn't 100%. happen. Playoffs, those were great. Yeah, that I mean, was a lot of fun. Do you yes. not remember the <laughs> like, bubble? We forgot about all the. Sh- I mean, granted, we had a three month pause right. before then. It basically we, felt I like mean, a new season. But we forgot about all that crap. We're like, oh, yeah. holy cow, we're gonna win it all next. Well, year. even the twenty two <laughs> team, because that was like the most fun sun season, or one of the most fun sun seasons ever. 
and then it was the most traumatic. Yeah, we don't we don't like to remember no, you can the say that, G. Of that one. You can say it was. Mm -hmm. it, it was a franchise record, sixty four and eighteen season. They were racking off twenty game win streaks, mm -hmm. man. Like they yep. were running <laughs> through the league. And mm -hmm. again, look at the differential between the best record and the next best record. It was like eight nine it was like games. Nine, yeah. Okay, that is an absolute a fucking annihilation of the NBA for the regular season. Mm -hmm. And what did it get you? A 185-point blowout in Game 7 to the Mavericks. Yep. That's what he got you. Mm -hmm. And so I made that point the other day, G. I said, this team reminds me a little bit of that Maverick team. Mm -hmm. A team that if you take lightly and you mess around with your food, will go in there and smack your ass in the playoffs. And before you know it, they're in the Western Conference Finals. And then we're all running around Phoenix with Rally the Valley shirts on. Forgetting all the shit we talked about in the regular season. It happened with the Diamondbacks this year. I wasn't here, but from afar, I'm sure people were destroying oh. the Diamondbacks in the regular season. This team don't got a bullpen. They can't close the game. These guys aren't clutch. Mm. And then all of a sudden, we run around with this a fucking wagon shirt on. We in the World <laughs> Series. Hey, so, don't for smirch the birch we No, saw. no, I'm not <laughs> doing I mean, that. I'm, what, I'm saying, what I'm saying is this is why I'm a big believer and letting the whole thing play out before you come to a absolute stance. Mm. Like I am I'm going to let it play out. We were sold that this team should be a championship team, mm. right? Some people might want to go back to the pawn shop and return that. Mm. They no. may say, "You know what? I'm not buying this. Give me my money back or whatever." Mm. I'm going to wait it out. Mm -hmm. I am going to calmly wait it out and just see how this plays I mean, out. There is such a thing as playoff book. You know, Katie's probably going to be better you, this Lance. year in the playoffs than he was last year, simply because of the situation good. that was he was dealing with in that moment. Bradley Beal probably going to be amped AF to be in the playoffs. So, mm. yeah, I'm, I'm not saying I believe I'm not a believer necessarily, but I'm not saying there's not a possibility. You, okay, so let's say. They don't hit the 50 win mark, but they get the 48, right? Mm. There's been 19 teams. I'll give you, I'll make <laughs> you feel ahead, a little bit better. Go ahead, dog. For, for, 19 teams who have hit 49 or fewer uh, wins that made the NBA Finals 5 and 1 titles. So there's a little history that gives you a, a little bit of hope, too. So, you know what? Let's do the craziest thing that's ever happened in Suns history. And uh, let's do it. You'll flip that switch right at the right. You time. know, that first title for this franchise was never going to be easy. No, you knew it would no. never be winning a title is never what? easy for this cursed franchise. It was never going to be easy. <laughs> what, those that's what those first say. 55 years didn't teach us that. No, <laughs> All I know is you better make sure you're there for the action. And our friends over at Game Time have your back. When you are trying to get tickets to your favorite sporting events or concerts, wherever you live, Game Time is the place for the best deals on last minute tickets. It's the fastest growing ticketing app in the country. And for a reason, one of my favorite things about Game Time is the interface is just so simple. Mm -hmm. Like you can see exactly where your tickets are, what the view looks like pricing everything it makes everything so easy and i very much appreciate that about game time and right now they want you to be able to snag the tickets without the stress and get a little bit of a discount as well all you got to do is download the game time app create an account use code phnx and you're going to get 20 dollars off your first purchase now terms do apply but again just create an account and redeem that code phnx for 20 dollars off Download Game Time today, last minute tickets, lowest prices guaranteed. And of course, like I said, it's not just for sports, it's also for concerts and other things as well. So keep an eye out this summer if you are looking to hit up some festivals or maybe take a weekend trip to Vegas, you can get some really good deals on Game Time uh, all over the country. So check it out, code PHNX. I'm actually going to see Bruce Springsteen down the street tonight because there I'm an go. old white man. And uh, <laughs> and you can actually get in for like 107 bucks, which is significantly That's cheaper than, than what I paid on game time. So it pays to procrastinate, but you know what you shouldn't procrastinate with? Hmm. A good Mick Ultra. Mm. Because it's got 2.6 carbs, 95 calories, and it's got all the taste you need in a beer. You've seen me. I enjoy this product on this program even. I chug it sometimes on this show. <laughs> it does. Because it's just that damn good. And you know what? You gotta have a smooth beer when you chug it. Lindsay hasn't seen that yet. That, Lindsay's I think new I, to this. that might have, I might have, is that on? 
Thursday? Uh, yeah, I, I, it's it been was on multiples. two or three times, it's I believe, been now. I feel like I caught one judgment. of them. And you know, you need a smooth <laughs> not, beer. It's not good. Do that. It's not good? <laughs> not good for the oh, show. come on. Come on. Yeah, I'm when I'm not hosting, it's not too bad. <laughs> yeah, I'm uh, but no, honestly, you need a smooth beer to do that, and there's nothing smoother than Michelob Ultra. I love it. You'll love it as well. Even even if you're on a diet like me, 2.6 carbs, 95 calories, you can get away with that. But if you're not a beer person, that's all right. They got you covered too. The Michelob Ultra Organic Seltzer Essentials Collection is here for you. It's made with coconut water, which is healthy, right? Mm -hmm. uh, real fruit juice, check, healthy. Sure. Uh, so you know it's going to have a refreshing, superior taste. Plus, it's only 90 calories, and there ain't no added sugar in that. That's good. That's a good thing. You that should be looking at thing. those labels like that. So head over to MickUltra.com to find out how you can win superior NBA prizes. That's right. You can get some NBA swag out of them, too. And to find a Mick Ultra near you. It's only worth it if you enjoy it. And please enjoy responsibly. Absolutely. All right, guys. So I know... Good we job, don't have to dive don't. too much Good into job. this because we might want to revisit it maybe next week mm -hmm. or a little bit closer to um, real playoff starting, even though this is playoff playoffs, whatever Craig Vogel sure. was saying at the top of the show. Mm -hmm. But who are we thinking will be in the playoff rotation? Because it's likely, I think based on um, what we've seen in the past from Frank Vogel, we're probably looking at nine guys, mm -hmm. maybe ten. Um, and we know the the first five, Book, Beal, Katie, Grayson, and Nurk. Mm -hmm. What about the other four? I feel like EG and Royce O'Neal are kind of a lock. Yes. Yeah. But those other two. Both locks. Uh, I mm. think there's a chance EG loses minutes. It's a mm. slim chance, and it would be an insane situation. But it's ID. Minutes. If he, if yes, some, but rotation spot. No, no. I mean he'll be in the rotation. Like condensed amount, sure. But there's no way he's not a lock for that. Yeah, he'll be in the rotation yeah. because there's too many times where Frank has kind of unprompted pointed to EG as like he can do this or early in the season we were talking about the leadership of the big three and he just kind of randomly threw in eric gordon's been a really good locker room leader for us too i just wanted to mention that and even today when he was asked about thaddeus young and kind of not getting minutes there he was talking about how thad is behind nurk and drew eubanks he's a kind of break glass in case of emergency and he mentioned when they go small with kd at the five they like to have Royce and EG out there. And EG was just kind of a random name to throw in with that small ball lineups. because, And I think it's because he has the size and the strength to play up a position or defend up a position. But Frank likes Eric Gordon, mm -hmm. or at least respects the hell out of him too much to bench him. So I, I think he's set there. Okay, And I was being a little sarcastic with IT. I mean, that would be... <laughs> that would be wild. That would be insane. But I mean, another guy that... I mean, it still would be kind of crazy, but could, I think, take some of those minutes if he came back and mm. showed a propensity to, to hit those threes at Damian Lee. Now, I don't. I think we're running out of runway for that to be realistic yeah. unless, uh, you know, Frank Vogel goes full Monty and Abdel Nader's <laughs> this shit. But, Duly! Uh, yeah, but, uh, but uh, you know, Eric's shown that propensity to go pretty cold uh, mm. and, and, and to the detriment of, of the team at times, so... He'll be in it, but I I don't think it would necessarily be shock me if it's a quick hook. Yeah, this is intriguing because I I honestly I in most cases with fourteen games left in the season, mm -hmm. you have a pretty good understanding of who your playoff rotation is. Right. I honestly have to say that these next fourteen games are going to dictate some stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For instance, you got the five Lindsay mentioned, right? You got Book, Bill, KD, Nurk, and Grayson. Those five are definitely playing. EG and Royce are definitely playing. You're at seven, so now you start to say, do you play nine or ten? Um, remember, this is this is also playoff basketball, so your starters are going to play more minutes. Okay, you're going to have Book, KD, and Bill potentially all three playing forty minutes, so your minutes shrink. If I had to take a guess, I'm gonna. I'm being honest. Based on what I've seen, I think a Kogi's in that rotation. Mm -hmm. I think when a Kogi comes back healthy, for the simple fact of you're gonna need a point of attack, a defender, mm -hmm. and you're gonna need somebody to mud things up defensively, I would be safe with a Kogi potentially being the eighth guy. Now you definitely need a backup center, right? Who is he? Is he is it Eubanks? Is it Bobo? Are you depending on K can't depend on KD to play? You know, 48 minutes. So I think that's what we need to determine. Is it that young? 
is is who who's going to separate themselves and get Frank well, the most comfortable? Well, that young ain't getting any opportunities, so that's out the door. Well, no, I'm saying but if in they're the playing last possum, 14, Lindsay. Oh, my bad. Sorry. I'm saying in the She's last saving four, him too. I'm saying in the last 14 games, do you see a little bit of that? Do you do you see a little bit of that? Do you see enough of Eubanks and Bo to comfortably say this is the guy? Right now, it's Eubanks. It didn't sound like from what. Uh, Vogel said at practice that we were going to see any Thad. The no. way that it sounded to me when I listened to Vogel say that, I was like, oh, well, then he's just there as a break glass in case of emergency guy. Like, we're right. not seeing much of him at all. Right. And I've and, been saying this for weeks. Like, everything that Frank Vogel has said about Thad does not sound like he was ever planned to be part of mm -hmm. his rotation. It has always been locker room leadership is where he's first going to impact us. And he's a good third change of pitch center. Like, He's not, and then he outright said Drew Eubanks is ahead of him in the rotation. Why? I do not know. I don't know. Don't get mad at me, but I don't think Thaddeus Young is going to be part of the playoff rotation, no. and that's, I think there's going to be a game or two in the playoffs where the Eubanks minutes really cost them. Well, and that's the That's thing, what so I'm saying, G. Mm. Yeah. That's where I'm going at. Mm. We already know what Eubanks is. I think Eubanks is going to cost us. And I think that in the next 14 games, whether it's on the court or behind the scenes, mm. you you're not being responsible if you're not really looking at what that could potentially do. Mm -hmm. And so it could, it may be in a, you probably don't see any of it on the court, but in practice, they got to be working out some type of looks. They got to be looking at some, and I will not be shocked if when, can I say this on to, mm -hmm. you know, when, when, when things tighten up in the playoffs and, when and ass puckers, there you go. For? All right. when, when things start to pucker up, mm -hmm. I, I wonder if there's an opportunity where you say, man, I got to go with somebody that has been has been here, has done that. And so I'm not done with that yet. I'm not. I don't know if Frank is going to care about what I'm saying. But <laughs> if I were coaching the team, Thad mm -hmm. will be getting looks in the last 14, just in case. Mm -hmm. I mean, why wouldn't you? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Because that, that is... Eubanks is hit and miss. <laughs> you got one game. What was the game where that... Nurk fouled out, right? And he Denver. 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 Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes. Denver. Great game for, yeah. for you banks. And then you have other games like what we saw in the past week. And it's just like, I don't know, man. Yeah. I don't know, man. I, it's literally hot and cold. And that, you never it's a gamble, basically. That young is James Jones PTSD from that finals run where all his bigs got hurt and there was there was no options. I feel like that was the well, I need to have this guy just in case kind of move, you know, yeah. nothing more, nothing less. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Um, so you think it's, it's, I mean, the way that it feels from a Vogel perspective, it feels like it's Eubanks and then a yeah. Kogi probably. And maybe occasionally they'll swap those guys out with a Bull Bull mm -hmm. or a Nasir Little. If necessary, I don't think we'll Maybe. see Nas. No, no, I don't think we'll see Nas. I mean, I'd be, be surprised. I, I, that I mean, would we be, haven't seen much of yeah. him at all. Right? That'd be the He's ultimate. Certainly. We have foul trouble. We need any wing to go in there type thing. Like we've seen David Roddy more recently than okay, maybe Nas. than David Roddy. I, I haven't I, seen much of Roddy. Look, I think yeah. for that. But yeah. I think it's it's Eubanks, Gordon, O'Neal, Bull Bull, and Akogi is what you're going to likely get in that. Those in that bench ten. rotation. And yeah, maybe a few other names pop up here and there but i don't i, I don't think you're gonna i don't think there's gonna be any massive surprise no in this no yeah well he's not playing possum with the rotation either unfortunately and let, <laughs> and, and, unless you let isaiah thomas come out here and hit seven threes <laughs> and, and then and then, and, then, and, then, and then we'll be talking about a whole no oh, shit we found lightning in the bottom this guy can shoot the ball there we got go. we got to get him in there it so. might be a gamble i can't tell you if it'll be fun or not but it'll definitely be a gamble but one thing i can tell you is yeah. that gambling with the arizona lottery Look is always that. fun especially with their new unique ticketing uh promotion called arizona adventures so this is pretty cool right like arizona this is the perfect time right now to be outside and with arizona adventure and the arizona lottery you literally get to play by just going on hikes that you probably would go on anyway mm -hmm. you just check in at the trailhead online um, you can get more information at azadventure.com 
and you get rewarded and entered to win prizes, cash and Arizona travel prizes for just doing things that you're probably already doing on the weekend anyway. So if you are a big hiker or you want to go out on a hike or you want to play the Arizona lottery, but in a unique way, make sure you check out Arizona Adventures. Um, so you've got the three iconic landscapes, Picacho Peak, Monument Valley, and Camelback Mountain. And these tickets have prizes up to $50,000. And then you can also do the check-in like I was talking about. At Geolocated Adventures, there's 10 destinations across the state from Flagstaff to Yuma. So wherever you at, I'm sure you can find a really cool hike to go on where you can also get entered in. Uh, like I said, www.azadventure.com for details and directions on how to check in at destination coordinates are available on the website, or you can simply enter tickets online for a chance to win a million dollars in cash and Arizona travel prizes. It is the best way to get out, explore, be outdoors in Arizona and potentially get hooked up with some cash and travel prizes. The Arizona lottery is not just about playing games and winning prizes. It's also about give, also about giving back to the state and its community. So visit azadventure.com for more information on how you can take an adventure for a chance to win $1 million in cash and Arizona travel prizes. If fresh air is your kind of thing, but not exactly going out into Mother Nature, I got an option for you. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at the two of you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Primarily you. I know you. Can <laughs> but I don't like the you're outside. City. This one you're sounds like it's right in my Illegal Pete's means patio beers. Oh, there we go. They've got the best patio in the valley and down in Tucson to enjoy some beer and great food. Uh, head out there. They've got the strongest margarita in Arizona. It's been it's been tested. Oh. Uh, you know, pH balance, uh, all those things. <laughs> yeah. It's been tested. It's the strongest margarita. It can bench press 250 pounds. That's how strong this margarita <laughs> is. Okay. I don't got believe you. Also, <laughs> got a full menu. <laughs> said <Pixar> didn't <laughs> Full menu: bowls, tacos, salads, burritos, nachos, uh, and piping hot queso. Mm -hmm. Unbelievable piping hot queso. I love the guac though too. The corn is the best. Get double corn. It is. Yeah, the always corn makes me hungry when you have really dish not, <laughs> not all of it that you can do with the Legal Pete's though. You can join the PHNX and Legal Pete's bracket challenge for free. Mm. Prizes for the top three finishers include diehard membership. If you're already a diehard, it'll give you an additional year to your membership. A shirt and gift card to the PHNX locker and a Legal Pete's gift card so you can get food and your sports content it's fantastic check out our socials to sign up and remember illegal pizza is here to bring you a win-win with the legendary sound check deal bring your ticket stub from any ticketed event and get a draft beer or house margarita for one penny even flex with the gambling money he doesn't have i can afford <laughs> uh, one penny for that illegal pizza wants to celebrate with you whether it's pre-game or a post-game party. They got you covered on all your game day needs. Must purchase an adult entree to redeem a Legal Pete soundcheck deal. Illegal Pete's your go-to spot for burritos, buddies, and beers. All right, guys, to round out today's yeah, show, you see, love taking shots. <laughs> let's take a look at where the suns currently sit in the West, and then we'll take a peek at some things to keep an eye out on for mm, later. Not anyway. great, Bob. Eighth place right now. <laughs> mm. How y'all feeling about this? You, you, Confident that we'll be able, what, where do you think? I think they're going to finish sixth. sixth. I still believe that. I think they got enough that they'll accomplish, especially if they take care of these next four games. And I, I feel like the West is still going to be a gauntlet where a lot of these teams are going to beat them, uh, beat themselves up here. I mean, you look at it in reality too. You're half a game back of sixth. You're two and a half games back of five, and you're still only three and a half out of four. Like it, it's insane that the positioning between four and ten is uh, is so little. Yeah, I mean, listen, I said this the other day. I know everybody keeps pouncing on the Suns have the toughest strength of schedule. Go look at Sacramento; they have a top ten strength of schedule. Go look at the Pelicans; they have a top ten strength of schedule. Go look at the Clippers; they have a top ten strength of schedule. They all run into each other. They all play each other. Um, I still think the Suns are going to end up six. I, I really do. If I had to just run it out to you right now, my prediction right now on the show with 14 games less, left is the Nuggets will be one, OKC will be two, Minnesota will be three, the Clippers will be four, the Pelicans will hold on to five, the Suns will get six. I believe Dallas is going to be seven, 
And believe it or not, I do think the Lakers are going to come out of the plane and beat the Kings and beat the AFC. That's what I'm thinking. I could be wrong, but that's that's where I'm at with it. I think these next four games, if the Suns handle their business, Lindsey, Gerald, Espo, hmm. I can't be more, I can't emphasize this enough. Hmm. If they handle these next four games, they'll be the sixth seed, no problem. They have any hiccup. When I say handle all four, I mean go fucking four and oh, not three and one, right. not two, four and oh. Mm-hmm. Uh, Sixers without Embiid, Hawks without Trey Young, two back to back Spurs games that you owe them for coming to Phoenix and busting you up. Win those four, and you're in a good spot going into Denver on March 27th on a four game win streak and back to six. I hope so, because I swear to God, if we lose to the Spurs, I'm going to lose my shit. You would That'd because be you that's been bothering you it's all year. It's been bothering me all year. Okay, now you have a Wemby stopper and Bo Bulls is playing. Stop it. <laughs> Wem- Wemby's Stop been it. playing unbelievable <laughs> recently too, so that's not uh, not a guarantee by any means. No, no I <laughs> look, I, I think that they have a chance to get to six, but realistically, I think it's going to wind up. I think they're going to wind up being in the play-in. I do. I, I think yeah. Sacramento has a top ten toughest schedule remaining. But New Orleans, they're two games up, even though they're a top 10 tough schedule. They've been playing really well recently. And then you look at Dallas, and as inconsistent as they've been, they've got the second easiest schedule the rest of the way. They've got two games against Sacramento. Those could be huge for those standings, the flip-flopping there. And the, the Suns recently have not shown me very much against good teams. Like, they just haven't. And they can turn that around. They could easily prove me wrong. But we are in the doubting Tom stage of the season with this team. Like, we're not going to believe it until you show it to us. Mm -hmm. So I think there's a very real chance that they're in that seven or that eight spot. I don't think it's impossible that they get to six by any means, but six is probably, that would be ideal. You get to six, you stay out of the play-in, and you hopefully get a Minnesota team that is either just welcoming Carl Anthony Towns back or doesn't have him back yet for the playoffs. That would be your ideal scenario but more than likely, I think you might wind up in a playing situation. And even if you get that seed, that seven or eight seed, then guess what? It's the Nuggets or it's the Oklahoma City Thunder on the road. And those are both really tough ways to start the playoffs. Who do you got six? Who do you think is going to be six? I would probably say Dallas. I think Sacramento has been a little more inconsistent. They have a tougher schedule. And Dallas, that's the other problem is the Suns have one remaining game against the Kings. They are one and two against Sacramento, so they're losing that tiebreaker currently. And they went one and two against Dallas, so Dallas has that tiebreaker as well. So, like, even if you wind up with the same record as these teams, is you're it a conference probably record gonna... the first tiebreaker though? Mm, I think it's head to head. No, I think it's conference record. I don't know. I, to me, we'll, the... we'll, we'll check it. I believe it's conference record because that's why uh, that's why Sacramento jumped us the other day. We had the tiebreaker. Well, against they Sacramento. have a slightly better record. We than had us the right tiebreaker now. against Sacramento. We didn't have the tiebreaker against Dallas. When we were tied mm-hmm. with Sacramento, we were ahead. What, were we? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Okay. It's, I, it's Dallas that we don't have the tiebreaker. So we end up tied with Sacramento. I believe we had that tiebreaker. Okay. To, to me, though. No, we beat them twice. The 20 point comeback and a blow. I'm sorry. J- to me, looking at this, though, if you take care of your own business, you can close a, a two game gap with the Pelicans. Yeah. You can, you can shave two games mm-hmm. off the Clippers. But you have to be this team that everybody supposedly thinks uh, you yeah. know that they were or could have been at one, at one point. If you don't take care of your own business, you're you're putting yourself behind the eight ball anyway. So like to me, worry about your schedule. Let everybody else, you know, mm-hmm. have whatever happens with them. And if you wind up seventh, so be it, but you have an opportunity uh to close close the gap between you and the Pelicans and you and the Clippers just by winning. So I figured it out. They because two of the in season tournament, it's two and two. They played four times already. So this last fifth game will decide that tiebreaker. That tie That's breaker, why. Yeah. All right. Well, a couple of games to look out for tonight that have implications within all of this. We've got the Mavs and the Spurs at five PM. We've got the Nuggets and the Timberwolves at six PM. Is going to be a simulcast, one on each side of the TV. I'm not yeah. worried about it. I'm watching nuggets. Go Spurs, yes. Go Nuggets. Why not? Uh, well, because you're not going to catch Minnesota. So no, but oh, that's, they could fall but, down to but three. But you want the Nuggets six. to win so that their yes. the Timberwolves are in that three there spot. There you go. I, honestly, I'm yes. not playing who's in the in the top three because at this point, <laughs> I could face any of them yeah. based on it. So I'm just looking at 
who do I need to lose to stay in that six seed? So yes. that's that's why I'm looking at that first game. Let's go Spurs, which I never <laughs> thought would come out of my mouth ever. Go Spurs, so. go, Spurs go. go Nuggets for me tonight. <laughs> yeah. Um. All right, real quick. My bad to hmm. the folks who sent us Super Chats because I'm going to have to re-explain the joke, especially for Libertarian Sasquatch because I completely forgot about Super Chats. Hmm. Uh, I'm still not on my She's A game yet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm new here, sorry. <laughs> so Libertarian Sasquatch, they sent us a Super Chat saying, I'm going to lose 20 pounds tomorrow too. This was in reference to us getting both better three-point defense and more three-point attempts. So yes. we talked about like almost an hour ago. So... Sorry, Libertarian. Sasquatch. Libertarian, let me know how you do it because I'd like to do that as well. <laughs> Same. But thank you for your super chat. Uh, Psycho Blue sent us one as well. They sent $10 and said, Basketball Cthulhu suspects with so many seeding stakes in our final 10 games, that's when we'll really start to see how serious we are. Legler denounced us as, quote, sinful. If only he knew, dot, dot, dot. That game was embarrassing on Sunday. It yeah. really was. Oh, yeah, it was. Um, I would prefer not to wait for the final 10. Can it just be tomorrow? Were were we sinful because we got screwed by Bobby Portis before we got a ring? (laughs) Oh, (laughs) my God. God. Black Mason (laughs) sent us one, and they said, you ladies and gents think Grayson is looking at this team as a lost cause and is ready to spread his wings? No, no, no. He wants to be here, but he is looking at this situation and saying, you guys need me. I just had a career year with you. Uh, yeah. Show me the Show money. Show me yeah. the money. Yeah, hey. Grayson is going to be expensive in and of himself, plus with all the amount of taxes that the Suns are going to have to pay for that as well. Yeah. It's going to be a pricey signing. Mm-hmm. To quote John Malkovich and Rounders, Show that man his money. <laughs> yep. Yeah. I don't know. I don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves on that one. While I do um, want Grayson Allen to remain on this Suns team, I don't think I'm ready to start talking about anything off season yet. I'm with you. That, like, I, that means it's over. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not entirely sure that I'm completely bought in on this team, but I'm also not really ready to like admit defeat yet. You either. should get mentally prepared because there's a world where four weeks from now we're doing trade machine Tuesdays. I know, but I don't want to do <laughs> trade machine Tuesdays yet. So in four weeks we'll visit that if we have to. Fuck. But until then <laughs> now, yeah, we, have, yeah. and we only Come got like on, three dog. guys we could move. So it's gonna be a log off. Remind me not to walk down the alley with you and man. <laughs> <laughs> Shit man, you got me stressing man. I don't get stressed much. <laughs> All right, guys, thank you all for joining us. We appreciate you. As always, if you are here on YouTube, hit that thumbs up button on your way out. It's absolutely free and it helps us out a lot. If you are listening wherever you get your podcast, rate, review, and subscribe. Don't forget to follow the show. My voice is going. I got to go. Ahead. You want me to handle yeah, it? Yeah, you do it. Uh, you can follow Lindsay Smith at Lindsay Smith AZ. You can follow Gerald Borgay at Gerald Borgay. You can follow Flex at Flex from Jersey. You can follow the show at PHNX underscore Suns. And you can follow me at Espo. And remember, I guess it might get better. Ahoy, hoy. <laughs> We all silly like the mayor. 